Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Dragali Lost, and today I'm going to be talking about High Mercury's attacks and attack patterns, as well as some small other important things that you should know for this fight. Even though this is going to be from a Lowen's point of view, there are some DPS stuff that I do know, and I'll mention those points whenever the time comes up. Also, if you guys have anything else to add on to this video, then feel free to share it down in the comments below. Okay, so let us begin by analyzing all of her attacks. She has a total of 12 attacks. First, there's the initial blast, which is called Tidal Explosion. Just like all the other High Dragons, High Merc will do an explosion blast in the beginning of the fight. This blast will inflict Bog, so make sure to use a character with Bog Resistance 100%. Otherwise, make sure Lowen is there to get rid of the Bog with his skill 1. Now, this blast isn't as strong as the other two High Dragons. The HP threshold to survive this is extremely low. In fact, you don't even need the High Dragon Worm Print in order to survive it. I'm not going to go over the health threshold because it's very low. Let's just say that if you meet the strength requirement of like 2.4k to 2.6k strength, then you'll definitely have enough HP. I personally would recommend 2.6k strength for consistent clears, but 2.4k can work depending on the team comp, so it'll vary from team to team. Next is Stomp, Dash, and Swipe. This is a 3 string attack. The Stomp will always come out first, followed by the Dash, and then the Swipe. It's very important that DPSers, especially Lin Yu's, know that the stomp will always target the closest character. Also, when she dashes, she always moves in the direction that she's facing. With that said, DPSers will have to position correctly to bait High Mercury to optimal spots on the map, and I'll talk more about that later on in the attack pattern segment. Fifth attack is what I'm going to refer to as water shotguns. High Mercury spits out several water balls at the player farthest away from her. You can roll two times to dodge it or avoid it by iframing. The sixth move is Whirlpool. When Mercury does this move, four small Whirlpools emerges from the ground and there's three different patterns. It's always random so make sure that you understand the placement of all three patterns. Notice that the top left corner is a safe spot for all three situations, therefore baiting High Mercury to the top left is something to highly consider doing. The seventh move is Spheres of Salvation. Four big bubbles will appear on the stage. They are always located on the top side of the map. When a character goes inside one of these bubbles, they will be protected from everything. None of High Mercury's attacks can hurt you while you're sitting inside one of these bubbles. You can even attack High Mercury while being inside, but be careful because only one character is allowed in each bubble. If you touch a bubble while a teammate is in there, then it'll burst. It's gone for good. It's extremely important that none of these bubbles burst because they are there to protect you from Mercury's waterfall attack. Before she does the waterfall attack, she'll say, Waters, heed my command. This move is unavoidable and I'm pretty sure it's always a one-shot kill. There's only two ways to survive this attack. The first is by sitting inside of a bubble, and the second way is by using your dragon skill. Just by transforming into a dragon isn't enough, you have to use the dragon skill to soak all the waterfall's damage. The reason why transforming into a dragon isn't enough is because the waterfall attack is actually multiple huge damage hits, so the multi hits from waterfall is actually enough to one shot the dragon, then kill your character afterwards. Ninth attack is Aqua's Prison. The character farthest away from High Mercury will get targeted by this attack. They will get entrapped in water and teammates will be required to break them free by attacking the prison with normal attacks or by damaging it with skills. If the prison isn't broken in time, then the player trapped in the prison will instantly die. I'll talk about how to deal with this move in the attack pattern segment later on because she does this prison attack a total of 3 times and the way to handle each one is different. Tenth attack is homing bubble. Again, it targets the character farthest away from high merc. This big bubble will one shot kill you if it makes contact so there's no way to tank it. You can't iframe it either. You pretty much just have to run away from it until it explodes on its own. The eleventh attack is bursting bubbles. High Mercury will surround herself with 8 big bubbles. If you attack these bubbles, they will pop and form 4 smaller bubbles and they'll move in the direction opposite of where you attack the big bubbles from. The safest way to tackle this move is by having the team huddle around High Merc before the big bubbles spawn. Then have one of the DPS characters burst all the bubbles all at once so that the smaller bubbles will move outward. Maribel's S1 is especially good at doing this. If you ever find yourself outside of the ring of big bubbles, then make sure to not burst any of the bubbles inward because that may severely injure one of your teammates or it may even kill them. Also, you can iframe the smaller bubbles if necessary. The twelfth and last move is Summon Help. She'll use Summon Help on the second and third iteration of Spheres of Salvation. High Merc summons four pesky water rats along with the four safety bubbles and these rats will attack the bubbles. 
There's two ways to deal with the scenario. You can either group up and take out all the rats when they immediately spawn, or you can just simply ignore them and take the waterfall attack by transforming into a dragon and using its skill. Alright, now that you know her moves, let's move on to her attack patterns. Here's a list of it right here. From my experience, it seems like she usually breaks around the 3 minute mark, so like around Bursting Bubbles 1 and Shotgun times 3. If you break her around there, then her next attack starts at Bursting Bubbles 2, so keep that in mind. Anyways, let's do a play by play with a replay so I can explain my thought process. In the beginning of the fight, she explodes. Just activate Lowen's skill 2 before the blast and activate his skill 1 after the blast. During this, if you guys notice, the Lin Yu is hugging Mercury on the top side because she's trying to bait Mercury's stomp. She's trying to make Mercury dash towards the top. It doesn't matter if High Mercury gets baited to the top left or top right. Most players will say top left is better, but I don't really have a preference. As long as she doesn't get baited towards the bottom, then it's all good for me. After she dashes, she'll do her tail swipe. The tail swipe has really long range, so make sure you get used to his range. If any of you low end players are struggling with finding a safe distance from the tail swipe, my tip for you guys is to use the stage marks as reference. I usually try to stand near the first wavy line from the center. After the swipe, she's going to do her water shotguns two times. All it takes is two rolls in order to dodge it. Low end players need to make sure that they are staying at max range so that they can bait the water shotguns for the team. Maribel and other ranged DPSers should be staying at mid range. Next is the Whirlpool. If you have quick enough reaction time, you can honestly just dodge the Whirlpool quite easily. Otherwise, I would recommend staying near the top side of the map because like I said earlier, this top left corner is safe from every single Whirlpool scenario. Okay, so this is when teams usually lose. Because Dragon isn't available during this time, the only way to survive the upcoming waterfall attack is by hiding inside one of these safety bubbles, so it's really important that none of these bubbles pop. If you're on a pre-made team, try to figure out who goes in which bubble beforehand. If you are playing with randoms, then it's going to be different every single time depending on Mercury's position, but as a low end player, I usually try to secure my bubble right away. I try to find the bubble that's furthest away from Mercury while also being in attack range so that I can just sit there, bait the two water shotguns and attack away freely. If I'm playing with another range character like Maribel for example, then I'll give up the safety bubble that's in range to them because they do more DPS. Instead, I'll go to the bubble that's out of range. Also, if you're ever standing next to another range character like this, do a random roll into a bubble just to tell the other players that, hey, that's my bubble, so there's no confusion going on. Alright, next is the Aqua's Prison part. Remember, Aqua's Prison targets the player that's farthest away from Mercury. The best way to tackle this part is by having one of the DPS players on your team take the prison. It's either the ranged DPSer or a blade player. You don't want Lowen to take the prison because by letting one of the DPS characters take the prison, it ensures that Lowen can get himself in position to bait the upcoming homing bubble attack. Whoever takes the prison, they need to quickly run next to High Mercury so that the other two DPSers can quickly break them free. While this is all happening, Lowen needs to stay at max range to prepare for the homing bubble attack. When the homing bubble appears, all you gotta do as the baiter is simply run around the map. When Mercury begins her tail swipe animation, that's when the homing bubble will start to disappear. Here, you just dodge two shotguns followed by a whirlpool. After the Whirlpool, make your way to the center to prepare for Bursting Bubbles 1. The whole team should hug around Mercury and either Lin Yu or Maribel should use their skill 1 to pop all the bubbles outward. When the bubbles pop, Lowen should immediately run to max range again to bait the upcoming 3 water shotguns. My teams usually break Mercury right around here so if she does break, Dragon immediately and just continue attacking until the Dragon wears off. Remember that Bursting Bubbles 2 always occurs after the first break. Again, the whole team should huddle around Mercury just like before except that this time, Lowen should stay outside the ring. Lowen players should have at least one of their skills filled up just for this moment. Stay at max range and iframe the bubbles with one of your skills. The reason why Lowen should be the only person outside the ring is because Mercury will do homing bubbles 2 right after Bursting Bubbles 2. With that being said, Lowen will guarantee to get targeted by the homing bubble if he stays on the outside. Then, keep running in the circle around the map until the homing bubble disappears. Afterwards, dodge a tail swipe, followed by water shotguns, and then some whirlpools.
Next, Spheres of Salvation number 2 happens as well as a couple other things. Mercury not only summons 4 safety bubbles, but also 4 water rats and the farthest player will get hit by Aqua's prison. Lowen should be the one baiting the prison this time around. If he doesn't, then it's fine, it's not that big of a deal. Now just like what I mentioned earlier, there's two ways to go about this situation. You can either take out the rats to protect the safety bubbles, or you can just transform into a dragon and use its skill to dodge the waterfall attack. If you want to consistently have dragon up for this part, I would recommend giving Lowen a worm print with shapeshift prep. Also, a good time to transform would be right after Mercury's dash. Just make sure to avoid Mercury's tail swipe because getting hit by that will take out your dragon. After the waterfall, she's going to do bursting bubbles again, but this time it's followed by whirlpools. Again, top left corner is a good spot to run to. And for the rest of the match, as long as Lowen stays at max range, then everything can be dealt with easily. It's basically just baiting the prison, iframing bursting bubbles, baiting homing bubbles and running around until it disappears, and using dragon transformation during the break. I believe that if you can survive until whirlpool number 3, then everything else should be easy as long as Lowen stays at max range for the rest of the duration of the fight. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's really not that hard of a fight once you learn all the mechanics. I think it's way easier than High Brunhilda, so if you can beat Brunhilda, you can definitely beat Mercury with no problems. Alright, now I'm going to leave you guys with a couple of replays to watch for those that are interested. They aren't exactly perfect replays, but we got the clear nonetheless. And as always guys, I want to thank you guys for watching, hope this video is helpful, and I'll see you guys in the next one.